Hello and welcome to another video. This is the first video in a series of videos where I will explain you more on how train tickets work, how train fares work um, and how you can plan your journey. And the first video in a series of videos where I will give you some great tips on how you can book cheaper tickets. Of course the basics of well, going on an international railway journey is planning your journey and well, this might sound easy but there are some things you really need to know and hopefully I can give you some tips in this video and share my knowledge on trains with you um, that might be very helpful for your next railway journey. Enjoy the video, subscribe to my channel when you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and when you like this video please give me a thumbs up. Well, let's roll the intro. <music> So the fun starts, of course, when you plan your journey. And there are many ways you can plan your journey. I mean, Google even works very well when you want to look up for public transport timetables. And national railway companies in general do have a good online system as well for timetables. So in general, this should be easy, but it's not. There is no really good international timetable system where everything is linked very well with each other. Um, the best system there is, is called HAVAS, and HAVAS stands for Hakon Vaarplan Auskunstsysteem. Hakon stands for Hanover Consulting, and this is the company that owns it. And Vaarplan Auskunstsysteem, this is German for Timetable Information System. And basically, most European railway companies will add their data into this database. And from there on, oh, you can look timetables up. And yeah, let me give you some examples on how this works. Havas is a great system where everything can be linked with each other. So information about trains, buses, but also trams, ferries and other ways of transportation. For example, the website of the German railway company is also linked to this system. Even trains that can't be sold via the German railway company will be visible when you look up timetables over here. But also, for example, the Dutch railway company and the Austrian Railway Company use Havas. The Austrian Railway Company does have their own planner, which is called Scotty, and this is different from their booking website. As you can see here, the website of Scotty is even mentioning that it's using Havas. So this Havas database can be adjusted to the demands and wishes of the railway companies and other databases who will use this. For example, uh, the Dutch Railway Company used it for the national planner as well. And they only display trains that will go from and to the Netherlands. So let's say you wanted to look up for a timetable from Berlin to Frankfurt. Well, they first only show you the trains that were going from Berlin to the Netherlands and then from the Netherlands to Frankfurt. Well, it's a scenic route, I guess, so it might be interesting, but you can get there a lot faster. Nowadays they adjusted this and it will be just visible over there, but there are some other things as well. As you maybe already noticed on the print screen I just showed you of the Scotty website, it was saying that this was the timetable until the 12th of December of this year. Now, now it's 2020, so yeah, that's true. That's the second Sunday of December in the year. This is the day when there will be a big timetable change and all trains in Europe will get a new timetable. This timetable will be published somewhere in October um, and some trains can be booked a little bit earlier and some trains can only be booked from October. Depends a little bit on the country and the type of trains. I will get into details about this in other videos where I explain more about the fares. So it's displayed until the 12th of December what it said on the website of Scotty. But Unfortunately, it doesn't always work like this. Some trains will only be added to the Havas planner at the moment you can book them. Let's say the Spanish railway company, for example, they just don't add their trains until the moment you can book them. And some trains can be booked earlier than other trains. So this might be why it sometimes looks like it's uh, well, rather interesting to make a train ride in some countries. So timetables and reservations, etc. These are different systems. 
even for the German railway company, when I make a reservations for a specific train, it's in a different system. So when the time of a departure or arrival at a ticket is different than the timetable, the timetable is probably going to be adjusted and they haven't done it yet. This doesn't happen that often, but I had it a couple of times, but I travel a lot by train. Another thing that's absolutely worth mentioning is that some trains are not even mentioned in the international timetable. And some of these connections are pretty important on an international point of view as well. For example, most commuter trains in Spain won't even be displayed in the international timetable. And this is really a pity. This is a network of the Rodalis de Barcelona. This is the commuter rail network of the province of Catalonia. And there are international connections along these routes as well. Besides that, there are lots of really popular tourist destinations along the Costa Brava. Let's say you want to go on holiday to Calelia and you're planning to find your journey. Well, it just won't be visible. On this section of the route, there is a good high-speed system as well. Despite the fact that there's a good high-speed link between Barcelona, Figueres and Girona, what is also linked to the high-speed train network of France, the local trains can be a really good option as well. Both Sebert and La Tour de Carole, which are located in France, do have a good connection on the sleeper trains that will go to Paris. I will go into details about this in other videos where I will explain more on fares for international trains. Um, and I will do this per well, country or group of countries. It's too much for in this specific video, but there will be some great tips as well for you. Another thing that might be very interesting and useful to know is that there are different ranks of trains. Of course, you find the high speed trains. These are in general the highest ranked trains you can find in a country. Then you find the intercity trains or something that sounds like intercity. And then you find the local trains, commuter trains, etc. A um, good example for this, um, what might be very useful, once I had a trip from Paris to Bordeaux and it looked like all trains were fully booked. But when I looked it up for an intercity from Paris to brive la gaillard when I pronounced it right, sorry my friends, isn't that good, there was a lot of availability. And from there on, there were lots of local trains to Bordeaux. So the French railway company, but also external website, say that it's not possible to book this journey. But it is possible and actually it's also saved me a lot of money because these intercity trains are a lot cheaper. Here I will give you some examples and explanations on how these different ranked trains work. On the print screen here you can also select what kind of trains you would like to use. For example ICE trains, intercity or Eurocity trains, interregional trains which are also often called a D train, local trains and S-Bahn. Well, the types of trains and how they are categorized is different per country. In general, the ICE trains are equal as the TCV in France or the AVE in Spain. But I will get in more details about this in other videos where I explain more about the fares. This is the planner I personally like to use. I will make sure there's a link in the description below. And here they don't talk about ICE trains, but about HST trains, which stands for high speed trains. Intercity and Eurocity trains are pretty much the same all over the place. And then you can also select local trains. Another thing you can select here is the option if it's possible to take your bike on the train. In the HAVA system, railway companies also add services they do have in a specific train. For example, the possibility to take your bike. But unfortunately, not all information is added very well. For example, the Belgian railway company, they don't add this information. Well, you can take your bike on all non-high-speed trains in and through Belgium. When I'm looking for this timetable from The Hague, where I live, to Lille in the north of France, there's only information about taking your bike for one specific train. Other information like Wi-Fi availability, power plugs, etc. is not displayed here. And this really depends on the route. So the extra information that's given in the timetable is not something you can rely on for 100%. Something where I had wrong information in the international timetable was on a trip from Samara to Nur Sultan, Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. Uh, actually, this train starts in Moscow. I took it from Samara 
and this is my one of my first trip reports and well i just show you a small section of this trip report where i explain my kind of disappointment and when you go on a long journey like i do right now i strongly recommend you to buy some food in advance as well although i'm in huge favor of dining cars my train was listed in the international timetable as having something like a dining car but there was nothing sometimes what might be a little bit difficult for the hava system is that you have trains that will have different destinations and starting points um, an example is well this example actually works perfect in the hava system but i'm using it as an example um, there's a train a sleeper train that runs between zurich and vienna at the moment the train is crossing the border with austria some other carriages will be attached to this as well. Um, and the train will split up in different sections as well. Uh, one part will go to Vienna in Austria. Another part will go to Belgrade in Serbia. Um, and a part will be starting at Feldkirch, which is at the Austrian border in Austria. And the Feldkirch part, part also takes cars. So people can take the car on the train and go to Villach, where the car train part terminates so all of these different trains do have different train numbers so this might be a little bit difficult for the system sometimes what makes it more difficult for the hava system is that on some parts of the route for example the part in austria feldkirch to villach this isn't just the motor rail train that well, takes bikes and does have sleeping accommodations but it's also the non-motor rail train from zurich to belgrade in serbia well, this train, as far as I know, does have all the same comfort categories in both types of trains. But on this specific part, it does have two train numbers. So which train number to use? So this might be a little bit difficult for the system sometimes. And it might also be that on one specific train number, the fares are cheaper than other train numbers. So when you're really well, handy with booking systems, and as a customer, you probably can't do this. At least I don't know how. Um, but as a professional, you can do this. You can just add a different train type number and maybe you'll get lower fares. That might be very interesting. Altogether, Havas is a great system. And when you know the rules, it has a lot of potential. It are just the railway companies that should add more details to this and should be a little bit more accurate with this. But when they do it, this can be a great system. You can even plan trains all the way to North Korea. I mean, that's great, isn't it? Last but not least, I mean, I gave you an awful lot of information about this electronic timetable system. And this, well, what I said, works pretty good. And of course, there are some limitations, but in general, this works good. But something that's also really good, maybe less reliable when there are construction works, is the offline European rail timetable. This isn't just all for international trains also lots of national routes can be found in here and it's not even just europe you also find timetables in north america sometimes even in south america africa asia um, well specific countries like south korea japan etc not all of course but you find quite a lot of these timetables in here as well uh, apart from that uh, there's lots of information on public transport in general on this I try to make a link on a place where you can buy these books as well. I'm, I'm trying to make an affiliate link so I can make some money as well. So please use the link in the description below. And something I really like to use as well is the railway map. Um, the railway map is not saying anything about the timetable. So there might be a track, but there might be no trains on a specific track. So it doesn't say anything, but it might be very interesting to see what is possible more or less. There's not only this one, there's also another kind of railway map, and that's this one. Um, when you have any questions, just write them in the comments below. For now, I think I gave you an awful lot of information. This is totally different from my normal videos until now, where I take you on a train, show you how the train is like. Um, so this is actually the first video in a series of videos where I will explain more on train fares. But to understand how these train fares are being made and how you can plan a journey to a specific country, it's good to know on how you can plan it, how this um, information is coming together. Um, so I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up when you like it. And when you like to see more train videos, uh, well, train fare videos, trip reports, 
I might also be doing a city trip for trainers soon. Subscribe in my channel, hit the thumbs up button and see you on my next video. Thank you for watching.